What up though, I'm Merce, Hip Hop DX, and this is The Breakdown. If it wasn't for the rap game, I'd probably have a key knee deep in the crack game because the streets is a short stop. You either sling a crack rock or you got a wicked jump shot. Yo, y'all know we are in a hell of a groove when we get to open up back-to-back -back breakdowns with Biggie quotes. And what he was trying to say there is he felt there was a lack of opportunity for young people of color to escape their circumstances. He felt there were only two legal options, basketball and rap. And that may be why your favorite MC used to have high school hoop dreams and most of the successful athletes who can turn into MCs are out of the NBA. But the connection is much deeper than that. Hip hop nowadays has a lot of corporate sponsors and new friends and very few day one homies. Basketball is one of them. So is it time we made it official? Is basketball the fifth element of hip hop? Let's break it down. All right now, before we go into the fifth element, let's make sure everybody's familiar with the original four elements of hip hop. MCing, DJing, b-boying, and graffiti. Got it? Good. Back to basketball. New York City, summer 1973. Hip hop celebrates his birthday, but also the city is still on fire celebrating their New York Knicks second NBA championship. Led by the great Walt Clyde the Glide Frazier, who in the same year linked up with Puma for his own signature shoe. It quickly became a hot item and staple among the growing b-boy community, which led to Puma becoming the official sponsor for the film Beat Street in 1984. Also in 84, rap's first worldwide superstar, Curtis Blow, drops this classic. From the beginning, there was a mutual respect and admiration. B-boys bringing their boom boxes to the ball courts and playing the dopest new beats while their homeboys play ball. And every hip hop head in the hood wanted to dress like their favorite rapper and have the same kicks as their favorite NBA star. So can you believe that it wasn't until 1991 when a rapper rocked a basketball jersey in a video? And of course, it was none other than the god MC of sports and hip hop, Fife Dog of the legendary Tribe Called Quest. Tell your mother, tell your father, send a telegram. I'm like an energizer because you see I last long. My crew is never ever whack because we stand strong. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of professional ball players and rappers come out of the same neighborhoods. But it wasn't until 1992 that we see an NBA player in a rap video. It was when Diamond D got New York Knicks forward Anthony Mason to be in his best kept secret video. Roll the clip, James. I'm not any of that. Black C, I'm the best kept secret. So yo, peep it. Yeah. And speaking of Anthony Mason, it has recently come to light that he was the NBA player mentioned in B.I.G.'s A Story to Tell. Yeah, no chill. But you know what's super chill? Ice Cubes, today was a good day. Called up the homies and I'm asking y'all Which part are y'all playing basketball? Get me on the court and I'm troubled Last week messed around and got a triple-double Freaking brothers every way like MJ I can't believe today was a good day This dude loved basketball so much that he created his own league The Big Three that just completed his first season The only other rapper to get that deep into pro ball was Master P who did training camp with the Charlotte Hornets and actually played an exhibition game as a Toronto Raptor. The first time I remember seeing a basketball player rap is in my favorite commercial of all time, the 1986 Converse Weapons commercial. Kevin McHale kills it. Are the kind of moves that never fail, the weapons the choice of Kevin McHale. The same is true for Mark McGuire. When I wear weapons, I'm on fire. Well, what can the weapons do for King? Well, I can do just about anything. You already know what you did for me. What? I walked away with the MVP. The Converse uh, Weapon. There was also an entire compilation called B-Ball's Best Kept Secret, which featured NBA superstars paired with MCs and producers like Warren G, QD3, and Grand Pooba. But what about the ballers that thought they could hop on the mic and actually have solo careers? The list is longer than you think. So as we go through it, I'm going to stop and give y'all some high or low lights, but I'll let you call it. There was Chris Webber, Troy Hudson, Steve Francis, Tony Parker, yeah, in French. Baby, 
laissait, mais sache que seule l'ambiance a de l'effet. Delante West, Meta World Peace, Lewis Williams, Iman Shumpert. My kicks? Shit. They harder to get than my bitch. And the team by the stairs and the lights. But you can lose all of that shit quick. So for now, I'ma chill with my brethren. In the bar with the ice for the fifth. Gold chains be tucked in the shirt. You lose it all trying to snatch my shit. Shit. Kevin Durant, Marquise Daniels, Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant. Your love's a sword, slicing, gently do my body, burn so sweet. Blood boils when you speak, yeah. makes me weak. But I refuse to weep, yet when I sleep, I feel tears trickling down my cheek. Lance Stevenson, Joe Smith, and Steven Jackson. But the player slash MC who's been the most active and consistent in recent years is Damian Lillard. Not only has his four bar Friday campaign been going strong since 2013, where MCs from all around the world spit four bars that compete to be posted on his IG account, He's also about to release his second full-length album, October 6th. Here's some acapella bars from the Trailblazer star, a.k.a. Dame Dollar. Small circle, man, it's hard to get close to me. I stick to who I am and not who I'm supposed to be. I never say much. They might say I'm awkward socially. Your girl, Miss Parker, and I'm Professor Ogilvy. So y'all see one thing and women see another. You see a ball of rap and not an educated hustler. But we gotta talk about the rock him of all rapper athletes, Shaquille O'Neal. He made his rap debut as Shaq Fu with his favorite group at the time, the Fushnickens. I'm the Hooper, Viper, protect the Viper. Viper. When I'm out the Hooper, yo, you better decipher. In other words, you better make a funky decision. Cause I'm gonna be a Shaq knife and cut you with precision. Bars. Then there was skills off his platinum debut, Shaq Diesel. Bars. Then on his gold sophomore LP, Shaq Fu the Return, he even linked up with the Wu. Life's a B and then your D. Refer to Nasty Nines, Illmatic, CD number three static. You don't want none, you're best to keep looking. A E I O U, Zatas whooping. He did go on to release two more albums after that, each consecutively receiving less critical acclaim. But that doesn't matter because he's a true B boy of sorts. And recently, he's just started DJing. He's not spinning hip hop. But still, that's three out of four elements. And finally, let's not forget that he kicked one of the illest freestyles of the 2000s. Stop, think about that. It ain't about that. It's about P.I.G. A.K.A. Big Shaq. Now that's the difference between first and last place. Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. And that's just about enough of NBA players who tried to be MCs. As you can see, rap and basketball don't always make the best combination. But where it always works out to me is in the underground. Like rap music, basketball too has an underground scene. It's played in parks and playgrounds all around the world. Streetball to me is where the culture and the sport have the most synergy. Take this GOAT term we like to throw around all the time. Without streetball king Earl the GOAT Manigault, that term wouldn't exist. He was mentored by Holcomb Rucker, the namesake of the infamous Rucker Park and Tournament that had been name dropped by many a New York rapper, from Sugar Hill Gang to J Treads to Terror Squad Captain Fat Joe. Can't keep telling me to speak about the Rucker. Matter of fact, I don't want to speak about the Rucker. Not even Pee Wee Kirk could imagine this. My team didn't have to play to win the championship. Come on. In that verse, Joe also name drops playground legend Pee Wee Kirkland, who's so respected in the streets and on the court that the clips not only mention him on their first hit single, Grindin', they got him to make a cameo in the video as well. The Jews is flirting, be damned if I'm hurting. Legend in two games like I'm Pee Wee Kirkland. Platinum on a block with consistent hits. Mr. Kirkland also made an earlier appearance in the film Above the Rim. But the most beautiful marriage of streetball and hip hop was with the And One mixtape series. In the summer of 1999, they started a campaign where they combined some of the best underground hip hop music with highlights from some of the illest street ballers on a VHS tape and gave one out with every pair of shoes purchased in one of the largest US retail promotions in history. They distributed over 200,000 tapes in just three weeks. The tapes went all the way to volume 10, featuring players like Skip to My Lou, The Professor, Hot Sauce, and Escalade. And the soundtrack was provided by such rap legends as Most Def and Quali, Prince Paul, Corrupt, and Cool G Rap. One of the most recent examples of streetball and hip hop coming together is the basketball court in Brooklyn named in honor of Biggie. 
Look, regardless of what Lonzo Ball and Michael Rappaport got going on, the love and respect between hip hop and hoops ain't going nowhere. And that's evident by the NBA bringing on Kendrick Lamar to be the voice of the 2017 finals. The kicks, the gear, the headphones, the bass god curse. The other day, CP3 posted an IG video of him bumping Rhapsody's new album in the Houston Rockets locker room. And Rhapsody on the same album has a feature from label mate GQ, aka Quentin Thomas, former UNC point guard and national champion. See, the culture and the sport only seem to become more intertwined as the years go by. Is basketball the fifth element of hip hop? Before you answer, keep in mind, we're gonna be asking the same question about other things. Streetwear, skateboarding, video games, entrepreneurship, the dope game, the list goes on. So what's your answer? Is hooping the fifth element of hip hop? You might say, hell yeah. You might say, fuck no. Honestly, I still don't know. Let's talk about it in the comments below. And as always, for more music and news, check out hiphopdx.com. Hey, y'all, before we get out of here, you can't talk about sports and hip hop without mentioning Stuart Scott. I know he wasn't an MC and he wasn't strictly a basketball analyst, but no one did more to bridge the gap between sports and hip hop culture than he did. So in honor of his contributions, we're going to leave you with this clip. Booyah! It's hard to remember how revolutionary it was when Stewart brought a little of that hip hop attitude and style and flair to Sports Center. And it seems uh, like nothing controversial now to say booyah or as cool as the other side of the pillow, but at the time it was a little attitude that Sports Center hadn't really felt before. So he brought that and it changed everything.